Hey guys, Victoria here and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be on the answering technique for paper 3 and how you can get full marks for paper 3 in chemistry. So first of all, I'll be going over the format of this paper first and chemistry paper 3 is to be done in 1 hour and 30 minutes and you have two questions. So you have question 1 and question 2 and the total marks for this paper is 50 marks. Question 1 contributes 33 marks and question 2 contributes 17 marks. So I'll be explaining how to answer each branch in questions 1 and 2 and I'll be using this question as an example. So this is a question on ECS electrochemical series and on magnesium and copper atoms. So the first thing that they will ask is usually on the observation and inferences. So they will need 3 observations and 3 inferences. So if you refer to the question, it is easy to obtain the 3 marks for the observations. So the first observation would be that the magnesium electrode has become thinner and you have to provide an inference for the answer. So the inference would be that the magnesium atoms have been ionized to become magnesium ions. So for the observations, usually you can obtain it from the question itself. You just have to observe the diagram and you can write it down. But for inference, it is usually based on your knowledge in chemistry. So from the observation, you can know the half equation is mg to mg2 plus plus 2e. So naturally the magnesium atoms have been ionized to produce magnesium ions. And then the second observation would be that the copper electrode has become thicker. If you see from the diagram, you would know that the copper electrode has become thicker and the inference would be that the copper two ions have been reduced. The last observation is that the dark blue solution of copper two has become light blue. And your inference would be because the concentration of copper 2 ions have been reduced. Next, you're asked to fill in the voltmeter readings. And this is like a bonus question. But there are two things to remember when it comes to this. So the first thing is to always standardize your answer. So if you want to put your answer in two decimal places, then make sure that all your answers are in two decimal places and vice versa. And the second thing to remember is to always put in the units, whether in the headings or for each of the values, make sure that you put in the units. And the unit for this would be a capital letter V. For C, you are asked to construct a table for the readings of the voltmeter. Again, this is like a bonus question, but there are two things to take note of again. And the first thing is the title should be correct. So the title for this would be the pairs of metals, not just metals, but the pairs of metals would be our title. And then the second thing to remember would be the unit again. You can either put it in the heading itself or you can put your unit beside each of the values, but it's definitely better to put the unit in the heading itself, put it in brackets, capital letter V. For D, you are asked to arrange the metals in ascending order of electropositivity. And to answer this question, you would have to refer back to the data which you have previously collected. And as copper acts as the constant, the higher the value of the voltage, the more electropositive the metal is. So your answer would be copper, RP, Q and magnesium. So the theory behind this is that the further the pairs of metals are from each other, the higher the voltage. And so next you are asked for the three variables which are the MV, RV and FV. And since you have already constructed a table for this, you can just obtain the variables from the table itself. So your MV would be the different pairs of metals. RV would be the voltmeter reading. And for FV, the solution must be constant in all these experiments. So your FV, you have to refer back to the solution. So your FV would be the volume and concentration of copper 2 nitrate solution. Next, you are asked to write the hypothesis of this experiment and for hypothesis you need three things so you need mv rv and also their relationship your mv is the pairs of metals but something which can be said about the pairs of metals is their distance between them in the electrochemical series so your hypothesis would be the further the distance between the pairs of metals in the electrochemical series the higher the voltage so in this hypothesis you have mv rv and also their relationship next they have asked for operational definition of potential difference. So for operational definition in chemistry, you will need two things. The first thing is what you have done and the second thing is what you observe. So what you observe here would be the RV, responding variable, and it would be the voltmeter reading. And what you have done is that the pairs of metals are connected to voltmeters using wires dipped in electrolyte. That is what you have done. 
So when you combine both what you observe and what you have done, the potential difference is the voltmeter reading when pairs of metals are connected to voltmeters using wires dipped in electrolyte. As long as you have what you have done and what you observe in your answer, you would obtain the full three marks for operational definition. For H, they ask for the relationship between the changes of the mass of the copper strip with time. And for this, you have to refer back to experiment 1. And your answer would be the longer the time, the higher the mass of the copper strips. Since if you refer to experiment 1, the copper electrode has actually become thicker. I is a prediction question, so you have to predict what happens when the magnesium strip is replaced with the silver strip. So instead of magnesium and copper, now we have copper and silver. And if you refer back to the ECS, you will see that the silver is actually lower than the copper. So now copper is no longer the positive electrode, silver is the positive electrode. This is because copper is higher and therefore more electronegative than silver. And then next for voltage, you will just have to state whether the voltage is higher or lower than a certain value and your answer would be lower than 2.7V. When magnesium was paired with copper, the voltage was 2.7V. And now that copper is paired with silver, the voltage will be lower than 2.7V. And the reason is because the distance between silver and copper is actually lower when compared to the distance between magnesium and copper. And then next, they want the observation at the copper electrode. So the mass of copper electrode will actually be reduced since copper now acts as a negative electrode. Lastly, you will have to categorize the ions in copper 2 nitrate solution into anions and cations. So do take note of the word solution here. The word solution means that water is present. So other than Cu2 plus and NO3 minus, you also have H plus and OH minus. So in this case, the cations would be Cu2 plus and H plus and the anions would be NO3 minus and OH minus. And the way I remember this is that the T in cations actually represent the positive sign in Cu2 plus and H plus. So this is the way that I used to remember cations and anions. Next, we'll move on to the second question and you're asked to design an experiment. But the key phrase here is to compare the effectiveness of detergent and soap as cleaning agent in hard water. So highlight that key phrase because that key phrase is so important, it will get you a lot of marks. And so these are the list of things that you have to include in your experiment and we'll start with the first one which is the problem statement. So it is super simple to obtain the problem statement. So for the problem statement, you are going to have to refer to the key phrase which you have highlighted and just rephrase it. In this case, your problem statement would be how are the effectiveness of soap and detergent as cleaning agents different in hard water with a question mark. Next, you have to state all the variables and your MV would just be soap and detergent since you're comparing between these two things. And then your RV would be the effectiveness of cleaning agents. So to get this RV again, you can just refer to the key phrase which you have highlighted. Next, for FV, there's a sentence that says you have to use magnesium sulfate solution as hard water. So that indicates that your FV could just be hard water. Next, they asked for the hypothesis and for the hypothesis, you need to include three things which are the MV, RV and also their relationship. In this case, you cannot use the higher the lower method, but rather you have to refer back to the key phrase to get the hypothesis. Either that or you can just answer the problem statement which you have written previously. So in this case, your hypothesis would be detergent is more effective than soap as a cleaning agent in hard water we have the list of material and apparatus and the list is right here. This one is a rather simple experiment and there are not much material and apparatus to remember. And next we have the procedure, so the full procedure is here. So one thing that I can say about procedure is in chemistry a lot of procedures involve solutions. So when a solution is involved and you're unsure about the concentration and the volume, the concentration to stick to is 1.0 mole per dm cube, and the volume that you can usually use is 50 cm cube. So if you remember these two values, you won't go wrong. Lastly, you're asked to tabulate the data, so you're going to draw a table, and you're going to write in the MV and RV. The good news is that for chemistry, the RV is usually just observations. You don't need to crack your head thinking about the RV. It would just be observation and then so you have to fill in the MV part and you can just leave the RV part blank the way you do in biology. 
So a conclusion about the paper three chemistry is that even if you know nothing about the material and apparatus and procedure, you can still obtain 44 out of 50 if you know the full technique to answer this. So it is clear that the technique of answering paper three is so important, so much more important than the procedure and the apparatus and the material itself. So for memorizing experiments, I would give the same advice as I gave in my biology video, which is to always memorize the diagrams. So from the diagrams, you can obtain the material and apparatus, and you can also visualize the steps. Try to go through each and every experiment in chemistry and try to memorize the diagrams. Train yourself to visualize all the steps from the diagrams itself. So specifically for paper 3, you won't lose much marks if you can't memorize the procedure and the diagram and the material and apparatus. But for chemistry, the experiments are much more important when compared to biology because chemistry experiments are tested even in paper 2 and sometimes in paper 1. So make sure that you do go through each and every experiment and understand the basic concept and try to memorize the diagram. So I just went through all the branches in questions 1 and 2 for paper 3 chemistry. So I hope that I was able to clear any doubts that you might have regarding paper 3. That's all for today's video. Remember to give this video a like if you want a similar paper 3 video for physics. And remember to watch the biology video if you haven't already. I'll put a link in the description box below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.